my friends welcome back to another art session this is Marcy at Princeton Paints it's good to see you all again to jump right into it guys we're going to be working on a 10 inch mandala today I am going to be going with the brown hues today as well and I've also decided to change up the background color now I've already started to map out my guidelines as you can see I am going to be using my specialty ruler to make the guidelines around. They are spaced at a quarter of an inch. Instead of using my white watercolor pencil, I am going to be using what's called an infinity pencil. This is just a basic soft lead pencil so that I could see my lines. You can opt to use a watercolor pencil if you like. And I'm also just using a basic eraser for the lead pencil. I'm also going to use a protractor today instead of using a segment stencil and I'm going to want to make sure that I use 18 points for this mandala. By doing that, if you notice on the protractor itself, we have 20 points from one side to the other side and in the middle it goes to 10 so you would have 10 spots. So instead of using the main tick marks, we're going to want to use the half inch mark and that'll help us divide those segments into needing 18 points. So I'm just going to basically lay this down and I'm going to start at the half inch mark between the top portion there and I'm just going to move myself around and make sure that I get every single half inch tick mark. Okay, so now that I'm finished with that, I can actually get my ruler out and I can line up my segment lines. So my tick marks, I can line up from top to bottom. And then I usually do the center one first, up and down vertical lines, and then I move myself around. Thing you want to do guys is just make sure that you're aligning your ruler up with the center hole and that you're creating these segment lines that are lined up with each other from opposite sides. So now that we've finished our segment lines we should have 18 of them and let me introduce you to what kinds of paints that we are going to be using for this project okay. So I'm going to put my pencil and eraser away. Introduce you to the paints. So the base color that we're going to use is called sugared peach. And this is a nice creamy, uh, warm tone type of white paint. I'm also going to use a warm white paint, which is on the warmer hue from the titanium white. It is a nice subtle color as well. And then we're also going to introduce you to some other tones. So this is the Morning Mist. That's a nice purpley kind of gray color. I have the color Portobello, which is on the grayer type of browns. I'm using the traditional Burnt Umber as well, which is a nice dark brown. I'm also using the color Bittersweet Chocolate, which is a nice darker brown hue as well. It's more on the ashy side. So those are the colors that I'm going to be using. I think I'm also going to use Mississippi Mud, so just so you know. I'm also going to use our favorite Happy Dotting tools for our dotting. Also going to be using our Pen Stylus. So these have those nice ball tips to them. I'm also going to be using my Wistonia's water marble tool. This is helps pull our swooshes. And then if we want to do swipes, we can also do some swoosh swipes with our XDT brushes. These are nice for a quick way of making swooshes. If you're not comfortable with that, you could always make the old fashioned swooshes by pulling them. I'm also going to be using a gloss varnish once I'm finished. 
that will be my last coat. I'm going to use a paint tray, of course, to mix my paints. What else? I'm going to uh, probably use some pouring medium just to thin out my paints. You can always check the videos that I have on how to mix the proper consistencies. And that should be it. So let's get this started, okay? Now I'm going to want to start in the center, obviously, with my dotting tools. I am going to want to use my bittersweet chocolate and I'm using the size 11 and a half tool. And I'm just going to try to eyeball this center dot the best that I can. Hopefully this size dotting tool will fit perfectly in that center circle. I like to use the side of the dotting tool when I start to move up in my size just so that I don't get that center nipple type bubble that forms. You want to spread that out as much as you can. So there is our first dot. Okay, so now I'm going to get out my, my stylus. I think what we're going to do is go with the size, I don't know. So I'm going to put them in order. Let's see, I have the one, two, three, four, and five. Those are the colors. White is one, blue is two, green is three, purple is four, pink is five. So I'm going to go with the size number four for this next portion. I'm going to go into using my traditional burnt umber. And so I'm going to make sure that center line is faced with me and I'm going to start with that first dot there. And I'm just dotting where the, the line segments start to come through and they create this small little square space. So I'm going to dot inside that square all the way around, just making sure that I'm staying consistent with the spacing from the large dot to my small one and that they're evenly spaced. The line, this next, the next guideline you can also use just as your reference point when you are putting down the dots. Again, the key thing is to just make sure that those dots have a nice negative space between what you're dotting and the large dot. Okay, we're almost finished with this portion. Made a little bit of a mistake, I need to clean that up. It's the only thing that's a downfall sometimes when you're working on a light background is you have to be careful of your mistakes. You wanna make sure you clean them up immediately. And there we go. So this is our last couple of dots. Wonderful. There we go. So there's our first section that we have finished. It looks good. So now I'm going to want to get out my number five dotting tool. Remember, this is our stylus. And I'm going to go in with our Mississippi mud. And now I'm basically just going to dot in between those two dots that we have just done. And this helps keep it staggered. It's also just this technique you usually do when you're doing small dots in the center portion and working your way out. Okay. 
And if all goes well and you did your spacing correctly and you followed where those dots were falling in the squares, you should have an evenly spaced nice amount of dots that follow each other all the way around. And there we go, so that is finished. Okay, so our next one we're going to want to do is get out our size number one. That's the smallest one I have, so if you have something smaller, you can use that. I'm going to use the color Bittersweet Chocolate. And I'm basically just going to do a small dot in between that center dot portion there. This is just going to help fill in that little negative space. So I'm just doing two side by side, if you notice. I wanted to do this portion just because uh, I want to make sure that I don't go too far out and then I can't go back in when the paint is wet. So um, I've decided to just use these small dots just as a nice filler. And there's our last one. So there we go. So that filled it in nicely. It's not too heavy on the dots, but it's just enough to, like I said, just fill in that small portion there. Okay, so next dotting tool is the Happy Dotting Tools. I'm going to use the size two and a half. It is roughly about almost the same size as the size five in the stylus. So you don't have, if you don't have the Happy Dotting, you can use the stylus. Uh, I'm using the color Portobello. And now this time around, I'm going to want to do the, the next line down, so I'm going into the next guideline. Okay. And now I'm going to dot and I'm going to pull a swoosh from that center dot that I just did there. Okay. So to show you up close, that's what it should look like. So my swoosh is being pulled in between those two dots of the Mississippi mud that we just did. Okay, so I'm going to do the next space that I have available for my swoosh and I'm going to pull up. So I'm going to do this for each of these as well. So we'll speed this up with a time lapse just so that we can move along in our video. If you need to pause the video, please go right ahead. So now we're finished doing our swooshes. So now we want to go in with our size number three stylus. And I'm going to go into using the warm white color. I have already pre-mixed my colors, by the way. So they are diluted if they need to be. 
and I'm just going to dot one dot below the swoosh that we just did for each one, okay? So I finished the large dots for the size number three. So all I'm basically going to do now is with the same dotting tool, let's turn it around and we're going to go with the size two now in the same color, warm white. And I'm just going to dot next to the large dot that we just did and walk the dot up and around the swoosh that we finished. And this is just going to tie in nicely with this beautiful design. So we're going to do that for each one that we just did. Okay. So this is what it'll look like up close. And I'll do that on the other side as well. So we finished doing our walking dots. I know that was a little tedious. So I want you to get out your three and a half dotting tool for the happy dotting. And I'm just going to go in with my uh, traditional burnt umber and in between the swooshes that we did so now we're going to go into the opposite spot not underneath it and we're going to place one dot on each of them for every single one all the way around Okay guys, so we finished our traditional burnt umber. Now we're going to go in with the size 2 dotting tool. And I'm going to go with the Mississippi Mud color. And I'm just going to basically do one small dot right below the dot of the traditional burnt umber that we just did. Show you up close, this is what it should be looking like. I apologize if there's any of you that cannot see this very well. I just have to make sure that the whole thing is in picture and it could be a little, could be a little tricky filming it. But so we're going to do this for each one. Okay guys, so we finished doing these last dots here. So now we're going to just keep building off of this design. I'm going to want to get out my size one and a half dotting tool. So I'm really just flipping around the dotting tool to the other side. And I'm going to go in with my portobello color. And basically what I want to do is just do one small dot just below the next one. The main focus on this design really is to just make sure that you're having your dots in a nice alignment. That's really the thing you want to focus on. So making sure that they're not curved and that they're coming out like a nice sun ray, so to speak. So we'll do that for each of these as well. So finishing up those dots, now we're going to move into using our brushes. I'm going to get on my XDT brush and I'm using the 2-0 brush. This is one of the smallest ones that you can use. And I'm going to want to go in with my Morning Mist. Now this is that nice purpley uh, grayish hue that I like in this paint. Um, and it's just going to blend well with the browns but also break it up a bit too. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm just going to do a swipe upwards. And so I'm going to start at the dot of the portobello that we just finished. And I'm going to swipe up so that it goes up and curves around to the top dot that we did, which is the traditional burnt umber. And I'm going to want to do that on both sides so that will tie in nicely. All right, so this is just going to act as a nice finished portion of this layer that we're working on, and then we'll start branching out from there. So I'll do this for each of these as well, okay? So this is a close-up version of what we have just finished. So it's looking really good. It's coming together nicely. 
So I'm going to get out my Happy Daddy tools again. I'm going to go with the size number five. And we're going to go with our bittersweet chocolate. And so now where those swipes were done in the center portion, we're going to work from there and work our way out. I'm basically going to be dotting that dot on the center line of my next guideline down. And then I'm going to add an, another swoosh. I'm just pulling them with this time. If you want to do a brush, you can, but I find that being more precise with the pulling for these kinds of techniques works better. So I'm just going to pull that all the way up to that center point like, and we'll do that for each of these as, as well as we work around. Take your time with this guys and make sure that you're uh, not rushing it. And so we'll do this for each one again. Remember to make sure that you're dotting so that your dot is centered with the line. So now guys, we're going to go in with our size uh, three dotting tool. It's the green one. And I'm going to go in with my warm white. And so this time I'm going to repeat the process that we did earlier by walking the dot around our swoosh. So I will be doing this for each and every one of these bittersweet chocolate colors, the swooshes that we just made. And just take your time and work all the way around, okay? And we're back now we finished doing our walking dots with the warm white color it's coming together really nicely now and so we're going to keep building off of this beautiful design i am going to go in with my morning mist color that is that purple hue that we have and i'm going to go in with using my size four dotting stylus and so basically what we're going to want to do now is we're just going to repeat this pattern. So we're going to do one more layer of our walking dots. So uh, w any swoosh that you want to start with, just start at the base and do a dot and then uh, walk your dots up to the point of the swoosh. I'm going to do one side for now and then I like to go back and I do the other side and we'll do that for each of these. Okay. So finishing up these last few dots here. Now I'm going to show you up close what it's going to look like. So it's really cool. It's starting to look a lot like lace almost, which I love this beautiful design. And so now we're going to move into the same color we're going to use guys, but we are going to add a little bit of white. So we're going to do a little monochromatic. So I have the paint in my tray that I already am using, and I'm just going to add a little bit of white to my morning mist just a small if you notice it's a small amount it's not a lot and it's just going to change that base color to a nice tint of the same color 
Remember, when we add white, we are making a tint. When we add black, we're making a shade. So I'm when I refer to a tint, I'm just adding white. So I just added a little bit of white to my morning mist. I'm using the same do size dotting tool. I will clean off the dotting tool before I start just because it could be gunky and I don't want large dots. And I'm just going to do the same technique again, guys. I'm just going to walk those dots. So I'm going to do one all the way around. So now that I finished the base dot, now I'm going to continue this and walk those dots up and around. This is just going to create this really nice design. Like I said, it looks a lot like, like a crocheted doily or some kind of lace. I'm always drawn to this kind of design. I think it's really beautiful. So again, um, I'm just going to dot up until I can't. So uh, do not overlap your dots where the swooshes are in, the, in between that area just dot up to uh, basically the base of that swoosh. Uh, if you notice, I'm only going halfway up. So I could be getting potentially about four or five dots out of the walking dot section. And that's okay. That's what we want to do. To try to go all the way up and overlap, it could potentially just look really messy as well. Just keep that in mind when you're doing designs like this. You don't always have to walk the dots all the way up around a design element. So we'll do that for the rest of them as well, okay? So we are finished with that portion of our design. And let's see how it looks up close. It's really coming together nicely. I really love these colors. They're beautiful together. All right, I'm gonna go one more time, guys. I'm making another tint. This is why I like to have a tray as well, just so that you can mix them. If you'd like to mix these in paint pots, go right ahead. But I feel like it's not necessary because you don't need to use that much paint, so. If you notice, I did not add any more of that morning mist paint. I'm just adding white to it. And we're going one more time in this design element. I'm gonna do one more dot and work myself all the way around. And then I'm gonna finish it out by doing the walking dots again. So we're just going to start finishing up on these last few walking dots and this will complete this section for now. And so now we're going to go into a different color. We're going to get out our number two stylus and I'm going to be using the Mississippi mud brown color. And so what I'm going to want to do now is I'm going to do one single dot at the base of where we did our walking dots section. And then I'm going to do a one small curved swoosh towards the right hand side. I'm not going to do the left, just the right. And I'll show you what we're going to do when I'm finished with this process. We're going to work off of doing this unique pattern by just doing the right hand side with some swooshes. If we did both, this design wouldn't really work and we couldn't execute it right because of the amount of negative space that we are only working with. So you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to just do the layers first. So I'll do the dots first and then I'll go back in and I'm going to do my swooshes. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to use the same size dotting tool, the number two. And now I'm going to go in with the portobello color. So I'm switching up the colors just using the same dotting tool. And now what I want to do is right next to the swoosh that I had done, I'm going to do another one. So it's just going to hug itself as if they're like a line of soldiers working with each other. 
and they're going to follow the same exact curve. Try not to get them too close so that they don't bleed into each other. And again, take your time with this, guys, please. And now the last one that we're going to do, we're finishing up our portobello color. Now we're going to go in with doing our warm white color. So again, I'm going to use the same size dotting tool, the same size two stylus. And basically I'm just going to go in with my warm white. And again, I'm going to repeat this last process. There's my warm white. I already have it in my tray ready to go. And I'm just going to do a quite a little tiny, quick little swoop. So you could see up close, very tiny. It honestly is not even tapered that much. So don't stress if it's not coming to a point, you just want to do a little tiny swoop. And this is just going to fill in that nice little spot that negative space that we're working with. So we'll do that for each one. So we're just going to be finishing up these last few swooshes that we're going to do for the section. Moving on now, we're going to go with our size number four dotting tool. And we're just going to create this really cool design with some swoosh in the center and then pulling. So I'm going to go with the bittersweet chocolate color and I'm going to go down about on the third line. I'm going to rest that dot on the third line, a little bit above it, I should say. So the base of your dot should be resting on the third line down. And then I'm going to take my puller and I'm going to want to pull that swoosh up towards the design that we just did. Okay. And then we're going to do a series, obviously, of these brush strokes that surround it. If you could see in the pencil, I am going to be doing every third. So I'm going to count three lines and then I'm going to do a dot. And then I'm going to repeat that process. So I'm going to count another three lines and then do another swoosh. So I'll do those first. And then when I come back through, we're going to work on the brush strokes together. And a quick little tip too, guys. So when the reason I'm spacing every third uh, line, obviously, is because when you do something like brush strokes, you want to give yourself a nice amount of space to be able to do this in the first place. Otherwise it's going to be overlapping each other and then the design won't work out in your favor. I'm going to go with my S2 now and <clears throat> I'm going to go in the same color. So we're going with our bittersweet chocolate. And now I'm going to do that repetitive design that I'm traveling through this uh, entire composition is the walking dots around our swoosh. That's our key element in this one, if you've noticed. So I'll do that for each of these as well. So finishing up on this last portion, we are going to repeat this process one more time. I'm going to turn my dotting tool around. I'm going to use the S4 this time, which is the larger dotting stylus. These are the ones that come with the happy dotting tool set. If you have them, if you don't, I would probably recommend using a size five for this portion. And I'm going to go in with the same color. So I'm going to go in with my bittersweet chocolate and I'm just going to dot the base. I like to do the, the base dot first and then I go back through and I will do the walking dot as well. When I do these, I'm going to dip in once with the paint and then walk the dot up like on the other side as well. So I dip and then I'm not going to dot that center first dot that I did. So again, we'll do that for each of these as well.
So now we're just finishing up this last few sections of these walking dots. Now we're going to want to start using our brushes. So I'm going to go in with our size. Oh, I think I'm going to go with the size two zero brush. And we're going to start doing a series of swipes. I like to call them swipes so that we don't confuse it with being swooshes because swooshes, even though they're same similar, they're not because we're doing two different tools. So I like to refer to the brushes as swipes. I'm using my traditional burnt umber this time around. It is also on the darker hue, but when it does dry and you look up close, you do notice that it's more of an ashy brown than a chocolate brown, I should say. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is just go up with my swoop. I'm gonna start on the next line below where my swoosh, where my walk, walking dot started. And on either side, I'm going to do a swipe up and meet in that point of where this swoosh was done. Remember, just do nice, even strokes. You apply pressure lightly in the beginning and then you pick up as you go up. I like to do these nice and slow so I can get a really nice cohesive swipe. So we're gonna finish these up. And now if you're familiar with doing swipes with the brushes, we're going to do another color and we're just gonna keep working our way up. So I'm gonna go with Mississippi Mud just to break up that tone of the browns. I want something a little lighter. So I'm using the same size brush, two zero. And now instead of being the line below all of everything there, I'm going to start the line up from that. This is why I like to use guidelines because you can be able to ballpark where you're going to put your swipe in the first place. There have been many times where if in the beginning I didn't do a guideline and started doing swipes like this and they were absolutely crooked. So this really does help us stay in alignment. So we're going to do that again for each one of these and then we'll go with another color after that. So now that we're done with that same brush size, and now I'm going to go in with using my portobello color. So this is like a nice lighter shade to help break up these dark hues we've got going on. So I'm just going to refresh in mine into my paint tray. And then I added like a droplet of water just to loosen it up just a little bit. If you don't want to use water because you're afraid of it and you think it's going to crack, then I would just use pouring medium. And you just want to use a little bit just to dilute it. And so now I'm going to go in with my portobello color. And again, I'm going to start with the next line up from where I was. And we're just going to keep building in this same pattern. Once you get down these swipes and these types of designs, it's very easy and natural for you to understand uh, how to paint these so you can move along pretty quickly. All right, so that's what we should be looking at and how it's going to look. We're probably gonna do one more color after this, maybe even two, I'm not sure. So, uh, so we'll do this for each one. So I'm going to refresh up my morning mist only because the, the color I have in my tray was from the, sh the tints that we made with the white adding to it. So I'm going to put the original color back in. I'm going to add about a droplet of water and I'm going to mix that back in with my paintbrush. I'm using the same size uh, paintbrush, which is the two zero. And again, I'm just 
starting with the next line up and I'm working myself in. When I start to get up, I'm going to have kind of a technically, uh, a little technical of a advantage with this uh, swipe because we're working at a very heavy angle. So try your best to just make sure that when you're doing this swipe at the edge here, that everything is coming in towards that center. Even if you have to cover some of those other colors, I like to push my brush down and then pull it in lightly and try and make sure that the that top color is the one that's showing the most. So again, like if I have to go over some of those colors at the top there, so be it. It's okay. It'll just give it a nice extra added detail to this as well. And you're going to just finish these out by just doing every single one. And we're going to go back in and do, I believe, one more color. Or we might just leave it at this. I'm not sure yet. So finish these up first. And then we'll go from there. All right. And so we're finishing this up. I'm going to clean my brush off. And then I think we're going to go in with one more color. Yeah. So I'm going to refresh in my warm white color. This is going to be my last brightest color that we use. And I'm going to go with the same size brush. Okay, warm white. And now that I'm at a, a certain angle like this, I'm going to want to go a little bit in from that other color that I had, or at least match it. You don't want to go further out because if you notice, they grow out as you start doing this design. But when you start to get to where they are almost sideways, they're horizontal, they're not at an angle, 45, you want them to be in the same same size, same alignment with each other. And if you notice, I'm just doing this little hump swoosh. So I push down, I hump, and then I come down and go back up. And so I'll do that for all of these as well. And then we'll be finished with this beautiful design. All right, guys, so now I'm just going to focus on doing the other side, and I'm almost finished already. There we go. And so now I'm going to go with another dotting rod. So I'm going to go with an eight and a half, a rather large dotting tool. And I'm going to go with my Portobello color. And I'm just going to use this dot as a nice filler for the in, inner portion of that area. I don't want too much negative space. I'm dotting about where the other portobello color was as well on that line where they both intersect it's really where they all curve down if you notice i'm filling in that little area i like to keep them on the same lines though just to make sure that their alignment is properly done and so we'll do that for each of these as well Okay, so that's all done. Now I'm gonna go with my green stylus. So that's my number three and my warm white. And basically all I'm doing is a series of walking dots up and around that, that large dot that we just did. If you notice, I'm not going all the way up and around. I'm just going to where those swipes have started, right? So it's a rather little bit of a different twist on doing a walking dot around a large dot. It just tapers out. So I'm going to do that for all of those as well. So now we're going to go in with our number four stylus 
and I'm going to go with the bittersweet chocolate. So at the base of the mandala itself, we're going to do a swoosh. Make sure that it's lined up to the large dot that we just did with the portobello. And I'm going to make myself what's called, I like to call these tassels. And this, I like this design because it helps uh, just finish out a mandala sometimes when you don't have any idea of what to do at the end of it. You can always do these tassels, which are great. And um, so again, I'm, I'm going to do one in the center and then three on either side to make a nice large um, design. And then, uh, so I'll do that for each one of these dots that we did, okay? So while I finish up doing these little tassels, I wanna talk a real quick about making sure that you had that original uh, tint that we had used for the morning mist because we're going to want to go back to that and uh, so refreshing that up and we're going to get into doing that too. So the next part we're going to want to do since we finished this I'm going to go in with my size 5 dotting tool but I'm also going to use my size 4 in my stylus. I'm going to get out the morning mist color so the original color out of the bottle I'm going to use with the dotting tool size five. And I'm just gonna dot one single dot right below where we did our nice swipe element there. And then when I come back to that, what we're going to do, it reminds me of a beaded necklace chain almost effect. We'll finish up these dots real quick just to show you and then we'll get into doing our little dots. So we don't need to do a real time, a time lapse on that one because we're on our last one already. That's those dots. Now that I finished that, I could put the dotting tool away. And then what I'm gonna wanna do is get out the size four stylus. <clears throat> So now I'm going to go with the lighter shade, as I said. So I had this still in my tray. If you cleaned it up, try to make another tint that's just a little bit lighter than the original color. And I'm starting at the base of that, that large dot, and I'm just working myself down and around. If you would like to draw a design, a line that kind of in a U shape almost, then you can do that and trace that line. So if you're afraid of messing up, we're really just doing the technique of walking the dots. It's just in a different manner. So I like to do this at the end. It gives it a nice like dainty feminine approach because it's very light and it just makes it very look very elegant and pretty. So we'll do that for each of these dots as well. So I do it on either side. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. There's no counting. You just walk the dots until you can't go anymore. And I'm really just ending in the center of that tassel that I did. And again, and once this is finished, guys, we are done with our beautiful picture. It's We're going to want to let it dry. We're going to want to remove our guidelines. Please do not forget to do that. And we're going to put a nice, probably a gloss varnish on it. You can also do matte for this one, considering that we have no metallics on our paints. You can definitely do either or. And then we'll be finishing this up, guys. I like the simplicity of this project. I think this would even look really nice, the design itself on a nice wooden bowl, maybe, or a nice serving tray. It really does look nice when you stand back and look at the different design elements of it. All 
All right, and so that's it, guys. So we're all finished. I want to show you really quick on uh, the the beautiful piece that we did together. I had a lot of fun working on this one, guys, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. It really helps the algorithm and it helps me uh, get my name out there. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, guys. Take care so much and have a great day. Happy dotting. Bye.